Is the masculinity confession booth satire or not? Is feminism satire? That's my subject on today's Fiamengo file. I'm Janice Fiamengo of the University of Ottawa. By now you may have heard about the masculinity confession booth, sponsored by the University of Regina in Saskatchewan, Canada. It's part of the university's Man Up Against Violence program, a program that invites men to accept their responsibility for ending violence against women. From Monday, March 27th to Thursday, March 30th, participants are invited to make a confession. The Man Up website tells us that, quote, we have all reinforced hypermasculinity one way or another, regardless of our gender. Come and share your sins so we can begin to discuss how to identify and change our ways. A friend of mine in the men's rights movement wrote me a couple of nights ago to say that the masculinity confession booth is actually a satire, that the whole revivalist drama of judgment and redemption, of contrition and absolution, of hypermasculine depravity and salvation through feminist grace. It's all a bit of fun. I'm not sure. The event is still posted on the Man Up Against Violence website looking real, and it has been widely reported as real. This is a vivid case of what's called Poe's Law. That's an instance when it is impossible to tell whether something is real or not because the underlying ideology is so irrational. It might be a mockery using exaggeration and parody, or it might be a sincere statement of belief. That's what the feminist assault on masculinity has become. And what makes determining the authenticity of the masculinity confession booth so difficult is the fact that the language of the Man Up website is so similar to other programs dedicated to reforming masculinity. These programs can be found all across North American college and university campuses. Brown University, for example, offers a program on unlearning toxic masculinity, while Duke University has a nine-week men's course the purpose of which is to rethink masculinity, to make it less sexist, controlling, and violent, as, as the website tells us. Needless to say, women are never invited to unlearn their toxic femininity. The mere suggestion is unthinkable. So when I read that the University of Regina was inviting students to confess their sins of hypermasculinity, I figured this was simply a more explicit version of what is already implicit in all the other programs, that masculinity is a kind of deformed humanity. It's destructive, it's corrosive, and it's sinful. When I learned that it might be satire, well, I was relieved. So the University of Regina doesn't actually believe that masculinity is a sin. That's good. So does this mean that all of the statements on the Man Up Against Violence website are satirical? There's a part there about encouraging men to, quote, accept their role as advocates in the movement to prevent violence in our communities. That must be satire, too. After all, it would be sexist to say that men are the cause of all violence when Statistics show that women also commit violence against men, against children. In fact, women more often kill their own children than men do. So it would be sexist to suggest that only men are responsible for ending violence. This must be a satire on the sexist assumptions embedded in contemporary feminist anti-violence propaganda. Amazing. This may also mean that the University of Regina sexual harassment policy is a satire. After all, its definition of harassment is so wide that it could conceivably refer to nearly any human behavior at all. It includes, quote, unwelcome remarks. Jolene, get your fat ass over here. Unwelcome jokes. How long does it take a feminist to unscrew a light bulb? Unwelcome taunting about a person's attire. Chrissy, that hat makes your ears stick out. Also, 
unwelcome physical contact. Sorry, I brushed against you as I walked by. Or unwelcome invitations or requests. I make a mean chili. Would you like to come over and sample it? It must be that this list makes a mockery of the idea that ordinary innocuous human behavior of the sort that occurs every day in workplace interactions could be deemed harassment simply because it might be unwelcome to one person. I'm glad to know that the university is taking a satirical stance against the excesses of the feminist policy on sexual harassment. And it occurs to me that I may have been misunderstanding all the other toxic masculinity write-ups. They must be satires too. They're so vicious in their portrayal of masculinity as sick and depraved. Brown University's Toxic Masculinity website tells us that, quote, men will often resort to violence to resolve conflict because anger is the only emotion that they have been socialized to express. Even a five-year-old who had observed only a few men would know that you can't pretend that the only emotion men express is anger. And a university program claiming to help men and to care about them would never create such a crude caricature. The website goes on to say that, quote, unfortunately, the way that young men are conditioned to view sex and their need to be dominant and have power over others also contribute to instances of sexual assault and other forms of interpersonal violence on college campuses. That's incredible. Can you imagine such negative and simplistic statements being made about any other identifiable social group? It would never happen. That nasty stew of social constructionist jargon about how men are, quote, socialized, mixed in with essentialist claims about what men need, it absolutely must be a brilliant parody of the fundamental incoherence and hateful bias of anti-male feminist propaganda. This must be a magisterial statement by Brown University that it refuses to countenance the maniacal exaggerations and supremacist rhetoric of radical feminism. And Duke University's men's project has got to be satire too, and that's an incredible relief because it includes a lot of hyperbolic anti-male verbiage about male privilege and about how masculine men do nothing but damage others with their violent sexuality. Their men's project discussions, we're told, seek to, quote, reckon with sexist systems that allow us, that is men, unique advantages while disadvantaging others. Unique advantages, like being considered guilty of sexual assault on campus if you can't prove a woman said yes at every stage of a sexual encounter. Unique advantages like being able to get drunk and be sexually assaulted by a woman while you're passed out and yet still be charged with sexual misconduct. Unique advantages like being four times more likely to commit suicide. <laughs> I get it. This is a sharp satire on the general indifference of North American society to male suffering and the tendency for everything masculine, especially masculine sexuality, to be defined negatively, as when we're told by a spokesperson for the program that masculinity is, quote, a knife that can cut both ways, both toward women and non-male identified individuals, and also against ourselves, end quote. Well, that has got to be a satire, right? That old sexist stereotype about male sexuality as always dangerous and harmful. I could go on, but I don't need to, because it's obvious. Satire is alive and well in our universities, and the good news is that it's focusing on anti-male assumptions and stereotypes. For a while, I was actually starting to believe that universities were seriously telling men that the only way to be a good man is to hate your manhood. I'm glad the masculinity confession booth at the University of Regina has really highlighted the crazed evangelical fervor and the pseudo-religious claptrap of feminist man-blaming. 
I only wish it were so. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please support us on Patreon. If even half of our subscribers gave us $1 per month, we'd be well on our way to creating more and better content. And don't forget to subscribe to us on Studio Brulee.